you not video it. I didn't plan to video this. Now I'm videoing it. I'm over here. I know I'm over here. I'm over I'm over here. I'm over here. Good day, mate. I throw Lana off, but I'm going to take the stairs. Hey, I'm Lana. And I'm Casey, and we are Class C Bras. You know, we're typically all about biking, bucket lists, and beer, the B letter. But we're in San Diego. So today's episode is going to be brought to you by the letter S. S is for San Diego, for snails, sea lions, safari, sweetwater. What else? I don't know. Stick around and find out. Action Pat. It's a California miracle. Because we're classy. Our first escapade was to see the unconditional surrender statue created by Seward Johnson. The statue resembles the iconic Life magazine photo by Alfred Eisenstadt on BJ Day. Interestingly, because that photo is copyrighted, Johnson says that the statue was based on a copyright-free photo taken by a Navy photographer, Victor Jorgensen. If you didn't know, Lana was an intellectual property lawyer for 25 years. How boring is that? I don't think it's boring at all, but I'm actually really curious to know, if you were a judge or jury, which photograph do you think was the inspiration for the unconditional surrender sculpture? Leave a comment and let me know what you think. Because I'm sure you have an opinion. I do. <laughs> In the rain, here we go. It's like a real safari. When visiting Safari Park, many visitors head straight for the free tram because the lines get longer as the day goes on. Others start going towards the Australian walkabout, stopping to see the tigers and condors along the way because that part of the park is uphill and people say you need fresh legs for it. Where are we headed? To the Australia outback. Okay, how do we get there? We're just gonna play like we're in the rainforest today. Except it's cold in the rainforest today. <laughs> yes. We've actually been in the rainforest and it was not quite like this. M I Z Z O U. Safari Park isn't cheap. A one day pass is a little over $70. But I think it was worth it, even in the rain. Where are they at? In that cage. Oh. Yeah, I see. Okay, I see two of them. The wingspan of a California condor is around nine and a half feet. And they develop these bald heads to help keep them clean when feeding off of a dead carcass. Ugh. All right, guys, the sun came out, and I don't even have a hat on. It's a miracle. Ugh. It's a California miracle. really hasn't been crowded here today, which is awesome. I mean, there are buses of children, but I think you get that every day. There are some wackified trees. Wackified? Well, look at those things. Yeah, those don't look natural. I know, but they are. I thought they were a cell phone tower. Some of these cactus are like Whoville. I mean, they're weird shapes and they sprout out at the top or, I don't know, it's just hooish. And we've seen a lot of neat botanical gardens, succulent gardens, but I can't think of a better one than this. G'day, mate. We are headed to Australia. 
walking about. Safari Park is run by the same entity that runs the San Diego Zoo, but Safari Park is the only place where you can see a kangaroo and a platypus. Quite briefly. Oh. Well, I'm so glad you're having fun. Gonna go see some animals, get a little fresh air. Living the dream. That's right. These Rodriguez flying foxes are only found on one island in the Indian Ocean. We also saw a lot of birds that weren't native to the United States. You know, and I love your birds. I do all types of birds. The tram ride is included in the cost of admission. The park offers several other safaris ranging from $60 to $700 if you want to get up close to some of the animals. Because it is between 35 to 40 acres, this means that sometimes we get to see the animals up really close, so close that they're like right up against the wall. Sometimes they're in the middle of the habitat, which means that they're a little harder to see. looking at me. He is? These lions were all sisters so they could be in the same exhibit at the same time. We lucked out and got to see feeding time for these gorillas. Turns out gorillas like corn on the cob just as much as bananas. Bananas. Are you like a minion now? Banana. These are not minions. Banana. These are banana. No. Banana. No. <laughs> corn. I was expecting to spend like the entire day here at Safari Park. Like I thought eight hours, but we got it done in like around four. Power walkers. Yeah, I think it helped that it was rainy out today, so the families did not come out in mass until later. While we leave. But now you know what time it is. Beer and food. Then I'll be happy and ready for a nap. She needs some meat. She needs to have that predator-prey relationship, but have somebody serve it to her on a plate. Yep. I don't want to kill it myself. I just want to eat it. For us, there's no better place to fill our bellies than a brewery. Or several breweries. Mm -hmm. True story. Mama likes to eat. She's mama. Okay, so I challenged Miss Lana to try to hit 100 breweries while we were in California. We have 123 days to do that. We got a good start on several breweries in the San Diego area. One of those breweries even started with an S. We'll get to that later. 
We tried a lot of different S-type beers too. I like IPAs and Session IPAs are good because they're always lower in alcohol percentage. And so, you know, they're good for day drinking. I like the sour beers. They're like the fun beers. They come in funky colors and funky flavors. And most of the time there's a lot of fruit in them. So I can count that as like the serving for the day. We got four different tacos here. This one has tater in it, mashed taters. Is it good? That's like Thanksgiving dinner. And you can't forget stouts. I mean, you've got your milk stout, your oatmeal stout, your dry stout, your coffee stout. Oh my, Forrest. <laughs> you love the chocolate stout. <laughs> <laughs> We tried 11 breweries in two weeks. Our favorite brewery in the San Diego area is, drumroll, Stone Brewing. Not only does it start with the letter S, but we also have very fond memories of one of their beers. So we're celebrating our anniversary today here. We got married on Pi Day of the Century and Stone Brewing had a Enjoy Buy IPA beer that we bought out of the town where we lived in Columbia, Missouri. That was for Pi Day of the Century. Yeah. So, we thought it's appropriate to come here today. During our stay in San Diego, we have been at the Sweetwater Regional Park, which is a county operated park located about 30 or 40 minutes east of San Diego, depending on traffic. And there are a couple of things that you should know about the park. The first is that it's relatively cheap. And by cheap, I mean that it was about 500 bucks or so for two weeks for full hookups. And let me tell you, that is a deal, deal, deal compared to what we are going to be paying over the next few months in some California RV parks. Another thing that you should know about this park is that it fills up quickly. We made our reservations about 10 months in advance. And let me tell you, while we were here, people were coming and going. It was very rare to see a vacant site here, even during the week. And so the fact that we have full hookups here for two consecutive weeks at the same site, that really did take some planning. So my advice is, Plan ahead if you're coming to San Diego. For our next escapade, we went a little north to La Jolla. California sea lions can grow to be over 8 feet long and over 1,000 pounds. They can also swim at over 20 miles per hour and can stay underwater for up to 10 minutes at a time. Okay, so this is the most awesome thing we've done in the San Diego metro area. 
Yeah, and it's free. It's just cool. Nature, nature is awesome. We were also treated to a huge flock of cormorants with these bright blue jowls. And it was so cool to see the birds nesting along the beach. You know, it's not just the sea lions, it's also all of the yellow flowers and the shorebirds. I mean, I, who wouldn't want to live here? Well, me, because I can't afford it. We're going in there, I think. I'm just going to throw Lana off, but I'm going to take the stairs. Since the early 1900s, people have been descending this tunnel to the Sunny Jim Cave, first by a rope and later by the 145 steps to the bottom. Fun fact! The Sunny Jim Cave was named after a popular serial cartoon character because the cave opening is supposed to resemble his head. You sure about that? Okay, now we gotta go up. Watch your head. Yep, I'm watching it. There's supposed to be 145 steps in this bad boy. Ugh, here we go. The cave was okay, but if you're short on time, I think the sea lions offer better entertainment value. I agree. You know, 10 bucks for the cave, but the sea lions are free. This is like one of the top things to do in San Diego, so we're doing it. Crossing yeah. a bridge. Yeah. I don't know. Not only is this a walking video, this is a bridge walking video. Built in 1912, the 375-foot-long Spruce Street Suspension Bridge was designed to link neighborhoods to the nearby trolley stops. What's crazy is that this bridge can hold up to 150 tons. So think about that. The bridge could support the weight of over 2,000 people. It's wobbling. Look at that. Yeah, don't do that. She doesn't like it. We're not do this. She has a contemplative look. That is so dumb. I think more like this. Like what? There you have it, folks. Whoa, it gets real good right there. You know what? We could cross it twice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that was awesome. Totally worth five minutes of our time. Now let's go to Chicano Park. What's there? Murals. Oh. Art and murals. Art is murals. True. When Interstate 5 was built in the 1960s, it bisected the Mexican-American community known as Barrio Logan. To help appease the locals, they were promised to park on the land underneath the Coronado Bridge. In 1970, residents learned that a California Highway Patrol station was going to be built on the land instead. After days of protesting, construction was halted and the locals began constructing for themselves what is now Chicano Park. Within a few years, many of the murals were curated, but preservation of the murals while retrofitting the Coronado Bridge remains a constant challenge. Today, the park is managed not by the city, but by a local steering committee. The park was designated as a National Historic Landmark in 2016. Now you realize that Chicano Park has no S in it. True, and neither does Cabrillo National Monument, but trust me people, I'm going to find some sort of S connection. Ooh, let's S it up. We're, we're going to S it up somehow. <laughs> Cabrillo National Monument is located on the southernmost part of the Point Loma Peninsula. 
The monument commemorates the landing of Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo in 1542, which was the first time a European expedition had set foot on what later became the west coast of the United States. He set sail on the San Salvador ship. That's five S's, people. Five S's. The monument is home to the old Point Loma Lighthouse, and we learned all about how lighthouses work. The area offers stunning views of the San Diego Bay. We also had an opportunity for short hikes along the tide pools. Today we're going to take the bikes from Imperial Beach up to Coronado on the Bayshore Bikeway. I think it's about seven or so miles one way. I forgot the GoPro, so I'm not going to have much footage of this, but I hear it's going to be pretty. The great thing about this ride is that it goes right by the San Diego Bay Wildlife Refuge. So if you're into birding, shorebirds. This bike path is also known as, wait for it, the Silver Strand Bikeway. If you want to go further, there is a loop that a lot of bikers take all the way around the San Diego Bay, but that requires a ferry ride. So it seems like every morning here at Sweetwater Regional Park, especially if there's a rain, we wake up to all of these snails everywhere on the campground in the road. Casey calls it snail mageddon. But I'm telling you, I have literally spent hours watching these creatures move around. You know, that's what our channel is about. It's just action-packed snail adventures. Most snails have four tentacles. The upper ones have eye spots at the ends which can basically only see light and dark. The lower tentacles are primarily used to smell. A typical garden snail has about 14,000 microscopic teeth arranged in rows on a tongue. The large exposed base of the snail is the foot, and they move around by producing a mucus that helps them slide over all kinds of surfaces. This mucus is what leads the telltale snail trail. Try saying that fast three times in a row. If we missed any S's in the San Diego area, which I don't think we did, leave us a comment below and let us know, because then we S'd up again. <laughs> Dang it. Oh, I just thought of another S word. Do you know what it is? What is it? Subscribe. Oh, that's perfect. If you like this video, hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. And remember, whether you're on the road or on the web, stay classy. Cheers.